Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. By far, the most common question that I get is, should I buy a house right now or should I wait? Therefore, that is the topic of today's video. I figure the best way to help you make this decision though is to share the latest stats regarding the rental market in the US as well as the housing market in order to make a more informed decision about what is best for you. If you are looking to make a move this year, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house, then check out homeandmoney.com slash Jason to get connected with a great real estate agent in your neck of the woods. All right, with that said, let's begin today's video. So here's the latest stats we have for the rental market. This is compliments of Redfin. They said that asking rents rose a record 15% in January. So I'm going to be sharing all the um, cities that have the highest rent increases as well as the ones that had the lowest rent increases as well. And also compare this to the average monthly mortgage payment as well uh, to help you make a more informed decision here. In any case, according to Redfin, average monthly rents in the U.S. increased by 15.2% year over year to just under $1,900 in January of 2022. That was the largest annual jump since at least February 2020. Um, however, their data only goes back to February of 2019. In any case, meanwhile, the national median monthly mortgage payment, say that fast twice, uh, for homeowners climbed 25% year over year to $1,600, also the biggest increase in Redfin's uh, records here. So uh, it shows that the average rental payment is just under $1,900, but the average monthly mortgage payment is just under $1,600. So according to Redfin, uh, based on these averages here, uh, the monthly mortgage payment is going to be less compared to uh, what you rent. That's not always the case, but on average, that's what's according to Redfin here. Redfin's chief economist, uh, Daryl Fairweather, said one of the only ways to avoid high housing costs is to move somewhere cheaper. But the list of places that are truly inexpensive is shrinking. Rising mortgage rates are squeezing out more Americans who want to buy a house, which is likely putting increasing pressure on rents in the coming months. So here's a really good graphic to share how the average rent over the past few years has compared to the average monthly mortgage payment. So in um, early 2019, the average monthly mortgage payment or the median monthly mortgage payment was around $1,300 per month. Um, but the average rent was about $1,600. So a difference around $300. Uh, compared to one year ago at the time of this video, the average rent was $1,641 compared to just under $1,300 for the median monthly mortgage payment. And now it's about $300 difference as well. But as you can see here, both rents and mortgage payments have been increasing really ever since 2019 since this data was released. So let's talk about the top 10 U.S. metros that had the highest uh, rising rents year over year. So have a look at this. This is pretty astonishing here. So the 10 metro areas with the biggest increases in rent prices, that's up 30% or more, are primarily located in the tri-state area and Florida. But Portland, Oregon and Austin, Texas also made the list with increases of 39 and 35% uh, respectively. So the top 10 metro areas that had the biggest increases in rents are Portland, Oregon, um, plus 39% year over year. And then all these other cities here as well, including Miami, Florida, with a 31% uh, increase. Uh, just two of the top 50 metros saw rents actually fall in January. So those were in Kansas City, Missouri, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So the vast majority of the metro areas in the U.S. are experiencing um, increases in rents, but also increases in home prices as well. So in Portland, Oregon, for example, the average rent is just under $2,500. Uh, that's a 39% increase compared to one year ago. And the monthly mortgage payment's about $2,200. Um, that is an increase of 25%. Austin, Texas also had an increase of 35%. Uh, home prices there increased about that much as well, almost that much compared to one year ago as well. Uh, you look down the list here, look at how many of these uh, cities here have an increase in rents compared to one year ago. All these cities here over 25% in Sacramento where I'm located as a real estate agent average uh, rental payment is $2,700 that's a 24% increase uh, but the average monthly mortgage payment has increased about 27% on a national level if you get down the bottom of this list national level $1,900 but all these other cities here above the national level here Las Vegas Oakland California of course San Francisco $3,500 Look at that. Oakland has basically the same rents as San Francisco, which is interesting to see that. Boston, Massachusetts, also the same as San Francisco as well. And these other uh, cities here, 
has still have an increase by double digits in rents, but below the national averages here. So that's what's going on in the rental market. I also hear, I don't work in rentals, um, but I hear there's a lack of rental properties um, for rent though. And then once a house gets uh, listed for rent, uh, a lot of the landlords get multiple applications as well, and that's causing uh, rent prices to increase just like the home buying market as well. So in any case, let's have a look at the um, housing market. So that's the rental market. Let's have a look at the housing market. What is going on right now? So according to Redfin, homes sold faster than ever during the four weeks ending February 13th as a record 57% of the houses went under contract within two weeks of being listed. People buying houses right now are paying more than ever to a median of $2,000 per month as asking prices soared 16% year over year to a new all time high and mortgage rates shot up to their highest level since May of 2019. Uh, mortgage rates have been increasing about 1% compared to August of 2021, a very short period of time to have rates increase that greatly. The pace and cost of home buying are soaring largely because there is little to buy. Of course, if there's only one house listed for sale in one neighborhood, then chances are that seller is going to get multiple offers and the house is going to sell for over their asking price very quickly. That's the big, big problem we have right now. So new listings fell 8% year over year, sending overall supply to a new low. The acute shortage of new listings for sale is the biggest problem in the housing market that we're facing right now. I actually honestly believe this is true because we all, we really need a, a ton of more houses listed for sale in order to cool off this housing market and to move more toward a balanced real estate market. We're really far from that though. So they have a really good analogy here and I, I like to use this analogy as well. So they're seeing that um, housing market's like a bathtub. So basically, so the water in the bathtub is basically the housing inventory, the number of houses for sale. If you want to add to the inventory, you have to put in water or new listings. And then when a buyer gets into contract, when his home seller accepts an offer, that's the drain. That's the water that comes out of the bathtub. So Redfin said, rising mortgage rates may slow the drain down a bit, which would cool off demand from home buyers, as record high monthly payments take a toll on buyers' budgets. Bottom line, without a flood of new listings, we'll be sitting in a very shallow bath for a while. And have a look at this. So this is active housing inventory or the number of houses listed for sale in the US. Uh, this is on Fred's uh, website, uh, but the source here is realtor.com. So uh, for January, 2022, according to realtor.com, we had 409,000 houses for sale. Compared to one year ago, in January of 2021, we had 571,000. So in one year, we went from 571 to only 408,000. When you look back to a pre-COVID, have a look at this. January 2020, we had just over 1 million houses for sale. Now we have just over 400,000. And really, when you look back to really any month, Prior to uh, May of 2020, we had over 1 million houses for sale in any given month, all the way going back to uh, July of 2016. July 2016, 1.5 million houses for sale compared to about 400,000 now, which is a, obviously a big, big problem. And by the way, uh, stick to the end of this video because I have some uh, tips about um, the only reasons why you should be buying a house right now. So stay tuned for that here in just a little bit. So here's the key takeaways um, for the housing market, according to Redfin, for the 400 plus US metro areas. And this, this again is for the four week period ending February 13th. So the median home sale price, this is the uh, median price of houses that actually have sold uh, during this four week period, was up 15% year over year to 354,000. Uh, this was up 30% from the same time in 2020. This is in line with the uh, median sold price that the National Association of Realtors is reporting as well. Anyways, the median asking price, this is the asking price that home sellers are asking for their houses when they list their houses for sale. Uh, that has increased 16% compared to a year ago to an all-time high of $381,000. That's up 26% from the same time in 2020. In addition, new listings, that's the um, adding water to that bathtub, new listings of houses were down 8% from one year ago. Compared to 2020, new listings were down 12%. This is a big problem. We need more new listings in order to 
have a more balanced real estate market or have at least a shot at a balanced market. In addition, 57% of the houses went under contract had an accepted offer within the first two weeks of being listed for sale. That's an all-time high. Uh, compared to one year ago, we, the rate was 51%. And in 2020, that rate was 43%. So here's some graphics I wanna share with you guys, and I'm gonna be sharing some tips uh, for you guys uh, when you're trying to decide, should you buy a house or not? Uh, median sale price is up 14% compared to one year ago. I mean, in 2020, I mean, I remember that home prices were very high. This is basically when the, uh, right around this time is when the pandemic hit. And ever since really the summer months, um, home prices shot up greatly. But have a look at the trend here. So the median sold price is going down slightly and starting to increase just a little bit, which is normal for this time of year. Around mid-February is when home prices tend to increase. So we'll have to see if uh, that trend continues. Meanwhile, the median asking price um, is also following the similar trend for the past couple of years as well, um, up 15% um, compared to a year ago. But I mean, look at this, 381 now compared to uh, just about over 300,000 two years ago. So a big increase of $81,000, which is causing affordability issues, which I talk about on the channel all the time. And according to Redfin, we have about 447,000 houses for sale. That's down 26.7% compared to 2021. But gosh, compared to 2020, just under 900,000 houses for sale. And again, 57% of pending home sales went under contract within two weeks. Uh, this number has been shooting up greatly, which is also following the similar trend of the past couple of years. So we'll have to see if we're gonna have this level off like it has the past couple of years. In addition, 44% of pending sales went under contract within one week. That is pretty crazy because that's well above 2021 and 2020 levels, 44% this year compared to 30% two years ago. Houses are also selling very quickly as well. So the average days on the market or the median days on the market is 29 days. In the Sacramento market where I work, the median days on the market is around seven days. So it depends on your market, depends on which area you're looking to buy in. Uh, a lot of markets, um, houses get gobbled up very, very quickly because we have a lack of housing supply and high buyer demand. So um, do some research on the area that you're looking in because not every market is the same. In any case, 29 days on the market, the trend is falling very similar to, compared to the last few years where we have an increase of days on the market um, over the past few years, but we should see this uh, decrease as long as home buyer demand is increasing. Uh, but compared to uh, 2020, look at that. Days on the market was 60 days. Now we're at about half that. So you have to move very quickly if you're looking to buy a house. In addition, about 41% of the houses right now being listed for sale are selling for over their asking price. That's well below the last couple of years. Uh, and also, we're not seeing a lot, whole lot of price drops. Price drops is when a home seller is asking too much for their house and they have to reduce their asking price in order to attract a home buyer. So we're seeing about 2.7% uh, are is a share of houses with price drops that are excelling. So only 3% of home sellers right now are dropping their asking price, which of course is very, very low levels uh, historically speaking. And houses in the US, uh, at least for the 400 plus US metros that uh, Redfin tracks are selling for over their asking price by 0.3%. And if we follow that similar trend over the past few years, that we should see this number increase as well. But we're starting the year at very elevated levels, whereas in 2021, we started at less than 100%, meaning that home sellers were selling their houses for slightly less than their asking price. Okay, so that's the latest stats we have for the rental market as well as the housing market if you're looking to buy a house. So I that, hope that was helpful. But here are my uh, reasons why you should only buy a house. So only buy a house if you have seven to 10 plus years for a time horizon. Uh, when people call me and say, hey, Jason, I'm looking to buy a house, uh, but I want to move in two years. I don't want rent to rent out my house. I want to sell it. I tell them, honestly, just rent because we don't know what home prices are going to be like in two years. So I would say only buy a house if you plan to live there or um, hold on to it and rent it out for at least seven to 10 plus years. Also, make sure you have a stable job. Uh, this is absolutely super crucial because you obviously don't wanna lose your job right after you buy a house. So make sure you have a stable job and also an emergency fund. Uh, I recommend about six or three to six months of your expenses saved up even after you buy a house. So if you were to buy a house 
obviously have closing costs and your down payment. Just make sure you still have an emergency plan or emergency fund in place after you buy the house. In addition, if you do decide to buy a house, make sure, or I, my recommendation would be to keep your uh, monthly mortgage payment of less than 25% of your income. So in other words, buy within your means. Uh, another tip I have for you guys is that when you get pre-approved for a mortgage, your a lender or your loan officer is going to tell you the maximum amount that you're pre-approved for. So basically if you're pre-approved for $500,000, for example, this does not mean you have to buy a $500,000 house. So just buy within your means. You can buy a $400,000 house if you want to. So I would just say buy within your means. Uh, don't overstretch it uh, and don't uh, be um, and house rich and cash poor. So hope that makes some sense. If you got any value out of this video, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. And also consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.